Oh, and I see a bigger bass waiting in the... He's coming up right there. Look at him. Oh, yeah. This is a spot right here now. <laughs> to the great outdoors everybody we are at deer camp this week feels so good to be out here coming off an elk hunt as soon as I got done I started thinking about white tails and just coming out here and, and just looking at them and checking them out and uh, we're gonna be doing a couple of things out here but in today's video uh, we're gonna be setting up a fish feeder uh, last year when I fished on the lease I actually caught some pretty good bass. There was a lot of bluegill in some of these ponds, and I think the big freeze we had this past season, it really, it hurt our bluegill population, really took them down. And I wanna see if we can get this bluegill population up and obviously get the, get the bass population going as well. So we're gonna be setting that up today at uh, one of the ponds I think has the most potential for uh, good, good bass. We've already had good, you know, four or five pounders come out of there and we just had a lack of bait. So we're gonna set that up. And I've got some other plans for some other cool videos I'm gonna do out here. Uh, but go ahead and subscribe right here to the channel so you don't miss a bit of it. And one of my, my big plans for the next few weeks is actually getting uh, Stephanie on a deer, getting the family out here. That's gonna be an entirely different experience. I'm, I'm usually out here by myself or uh, with some of the guys on the lease or some of my buddies. So getting the family, uh, getting them into a deer blind, We'll see how that goes. Uh, this feeder, I've never used it before. I've never put together a fish feeder. The goal is to see some, some bluegill, some fish, come up and eat this stuff, but I don't know how easy that is going to be. So I ordered some fish food online. And this is what I came up with. It's kind of like the middle of the road, price-wise, Purina Game Fish Chow. Doesn't that sound good? They're floating, 32% high protein, uh, strong fish attractant, economical, always good, complete and balanced nutrition. It's got a picture of a bass, a catfish, and a bluegill. The trifecta. So the feeder itself is uh, is pretty small. This is a Moultrie feeder. It's directional. You could use this for deer or hogs or whatever you want, but just a real simple one. I'm going to put it by the water's edge. I don't know how complicated this is to put together. A couple of buckets. And that's the feeder. Legs. So battery not included, but I got one. Yep, six volt. That works out nice. I think it's ready to go. All right, we got our food, we got our feeder. Let's head down the pond. This definitely looks like some fall waters right here. 
uh, this time of year is usually when you get your heaviest grass uh, before the cold fronts come in and they, it starts killing it and you know normally the water starts to draw down because of the heat and we're there we are at uh, drawn down tons of grass I think the best place to set up a feeder on any pond is probably going to be at the at the deepest spot you know in, in most cases that's the dam and the reason is you have the least amount of water fluctuation so on this one I'm gonna have to set it up to where this thing's gonna fluctuate throughout the year and obviously I don't want it to get flooded get the water coming up over the feeder I think if I set it up on the edge uh, here hopefully we get enough distance to get it out to where it is right now because I what I don't want to happen is I put it lower to the side and then you know the rains come and then then we have a major issue if there are any bluegill here we can get them get them big i want to get them big i want to get them out of the size class of the bass i just see a baby bass right there but when you get those bluegill that are so big the bass can't eat them then they just are always reproducing more smaller bluegill that the, the bass can eat and eventually work their way up the size class these fish out here are eating dragonflies baby bass Hopefully we still got some bluegill left. And of course frogs. But let's set let's set up the feeder. Let's see if this thing will throw. Did a little bit more recon walking around. I got good news. I found some bluegill. And even though this is the dam, uh, I think the deepest spot is gonna be right over here. It's like the steepest edge, and I can get to it with the ATV when I need to refill it and everything. So this is good. There's a lot of little bass, but I saw a little bluegill and a um, little bluegill and little bass. So the idea is we want to get those little bluegill grow. I think this is going to work, guys. If I get them on a little program, feed them, I might get some hammers. This is tricky. them off oh, we've got that pond weed that's like green leafy stuff there that, that stuff is extremely healthy for small aquatic life and oh yep bluegill just splashed right there oh and I see a bigger bass waiting in the he's coming up right there look at him oh yeah this is a spot right here now it's like he knows the feast is coming. The trick is really going to be getting this the stand level. That, that's going to take some redneck engineering, I think. But the steepness, I think, is going to give us uh, enough height to where we can throw the feet. I've never used it before. Uh, I did turn it on. I know it works. Uh, I just haven't thrown any any feet out of it yet. So let's get it set up. Let's get it level, and then let's bring in the fishes. So there's a little nook right here where it sticks out. I think this is going to be our, our spot. issues as I thought. I think what I need to find out before I set this thing up super janky right now is like how far it will throw the food because I might need to angle it a little back or if it's shooting really far I can it gives me some more options. It may not go anywhere it may just like trickle out and then I'm gonna have to really get creative but I'm gonna throw in a little bit of the chow. Just let her fire. Guess 
while we're at it here, we can give them a little, a little sampler. Look at the school of bass coming through. Ooh, they like that sound. And just that sound turned their heads, every single one of them. Oh, we're coming. We're coming. Get you some of that. I think that the bass will eat these pellets too because they are, they just don't have a whole lot of food in here. So I think that they will eat it. It's just going to take a little bit of convincing. Bluegill coming up to it. Give it a dangle. Oh, he does not like that bass behind him though. Come on guys. I need you to get stimulated by the chow. Looking at a solid two. Ooh, God, there's a three or four pounder right there. He must have heard the commotion. This is the spot. That's the biggest bass I've seen visually. Come and get it. I'd say that throw is pretty good. Bass are just coming up all around it. Just need these bluegill to just get excited. Live for the moment here. Okay? We are for sure going to have to cap this off with some bungees because the raccoons are just going to tear this thing a new one. But it's just a simple cap that goes on top of it. It's a really simple feeder. It wasn't that hard to set up. Throws pretty good. But the raccoons will be the test. Uh, I'm going to monitor this for uh, the next day and see if these fish start really feeding on it. I'm hearing another bloop. Like one just grabbed a pellet, but it's not it's not voracious yet. I just don't know. I don't know how much time that's gonna take. But I do see the bluegill starting to come up. They're looking at it. They peck at it. Um, we just, you know, we need piranhas. We need piranha type behavior. That's the fun part. But it is five o'clock, and part of the reason I am out here is to do some deer scouting. That's gonna be on the next video, but I'm about to jump in a blind, go up, get changed, jump in a blind, and see what's moving around out here. I'm excited, y'all. It's been it's been a year since I've, I've deer hunted out here, and you know we got a lot of bucks on this property, a lot of deer in general. Uh, it's just fun to look at them. So I'm gonna grab the camera and jump in the blind, but we will check on this tomorrow. All right, fishing freaks, welcome to day two of the saga. Setting up the feeder at the pond. It's time to go check it. We've given these fish uh, 24 hours, so they got an evening feeding, and then they got a morning feeding. I went out, I filled deer feeders all day. I've been scouting and all that stuff. Uh, we're getting kind of close to that afternoon sit time. It's like 2.40 right now. And I've got the timer set off to go on the feeder around, I think it's like six or something like that. But we're going to roll down here. I've got my fly rod. I always keep in my truck, you know, for if I'm going mountain hunting or something or just come across a pond. I always like to keep a little fly rod. I used to uh, fly fish as a kid at ponds with little like top water popping stuff. Sorry, I got a hair or a bug going on there. Get that. Good to go. 
so I've got that. I want to see if they'll respond to that. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw the feeder another time, and I've also got a solar charger I'm gonna put on it so it doesn't run out of battery. And then uh, we're gonna see if we can catch a few, catch a few gills, or maybe even a few bass on the fly. Well, it looks like our feeder survived the coons last night. I don't see any fish upon upon first glance. When I was when I was young, my dad, he's always collected like old fly stuff, and he would let me borrow some stuff. He didn't mind me jacking up, and I always had luck in ponds with uh, little floating flies, just little like poppers. Oh, I might need a reel. Oh, there's my reel. We're good. Keep my reel in a little separate bag. Put this on here. And anytime you've got these ponds that have trees around them and bugs fall out of the trees, usually the bluegill just fire away on it. More so than you will on conventional stuff. Got them in my little Bass Mafia ice box. This thing's perfect for, for flies. That little guy right there. I don't know. I don't even know what you call it. Uh, it looks like a popcorn kernel. Absolutely deadly on them. There's nothing really fast about fly fishing. Kind of an art. Got a customer. Bluegill coming up to it. Tiny. Need that big boy. Oh! Got a nipper. Just too small. Let's see if I can get fired up here with a little feed action. There we go. Come and get it. Fly literally looks like one of these pellets. Once I get them trained on this, it should be a no-brainer. I'm gonna try the other side where I can get a little distance. Oh gosh, that's what I was afraid of. And that is a nasty goblin. Not your friend when you got a noodle rod. Well, that was a fun experiment. Well, shucks. You know, yesterday I came down here at a later hour, and there was I could see bass like everywhere. Now I don't see any bass. It's very windy though. But what I'm gonna do is just set up the solar charger. I'm gonna let it ride. I'm gonna let these fish get used to this feed. Got this from Moultrie. I've got my uh, my deer camera set up with these as well so they don't run down. But it's got solar panel on two sides and then the battery box is inside. It's gonna take a hefty raccoon to get that thing off, but I'm sure when I come back here, it's gonna be in the pond. You know how it goes. All right, guys, it is 326. It is time to go sit in the blind. I've been working all day. Uh, since the time yesterday when I finished setting this up to now getting uh, getting a bunch of deer feeders set up getting some stands and cameras and all that stuff and uh, I'm wondering if anything's gonna come out tonight so it's time to go sit with the bow thank you guys for hanging out with me while I'm doing a little work here at the deer lease if you want to stay tuned Maybe somebody just shot one right there. Maybe they just shot two. I don't know. Stay tuned for the next one. Subscribe right here. Go ahead and smash that like button. And we'll see you on the next one. There's a daggum trash panda holed up in here. And uh, I, don't, I don't really know how to get him out. I'm pretty sure if I grabbed him by the tail, he would come at me with such veracity.